So in this search for meaning, uh, I did something in May of 2003 that at that time was a first, although now it's become commonplace. And that is, I had a session with a psychic medium. It actually took place on May 7th of 2003, and I remember the date specifically because that was the day on which my life changed. In this session with the medium, she introduced me to the concept of spirit guides. That is, highly evolved, non-physical beings with whom we plan our lives before we get here, and who then guide us through our lives after we're here. And through this medium, I was actually able to speak with my spirit guides. They said a lot of interesting things that day, one of which was, they said, you planned your greatest challenges before you were born. And I just kind of shook my head and sighed, and I said, why in the world did I do that? And they said, you did this for purposes of spiritual growth. So we went on and we talked a little bit about what some of my challenges had been and why I had actually wanted, before I was born, to have these experiences. In the days and weeks after this session, it allowed me to go back over the course of my life, review the seemingly bad things that had happened to me, and for the first time in most cases, see the underlying meaning, the purpose of these events. You are not your body, you are not your personality, and you most certainly are not what you conceive of as your faults and limitations. You are actually a light being, a holy, eternal, courageous soul who planned your challenges and came here to experience them for your own growth and learning. I thought Robert Schwartz's discussion tonight was amazing. He's a gifted author. He's come into awareness, into our awareness at a time when this is very important information. Um, it was exhilarating to read the book. It was very enlightening to hear it from his perspective. And I said to Spirit, I can't do this alone. I need some assistance if I'm going to write this book. And within a very short time of making that statement to the universe, four very, very gifted mediums and channels showed up who, not coincidentally, have the exact collection of skills that I needed in order to research pre-birth planning. So one of the people is a woman in Arizona. <clears throat> Her name is Stacy Wells. Stacy actually has the ability both to see and to hear the conversations we have with each other before we're born. So by working with her, I could eavesdrop, so to speak, on the pre-birth planning sessions, and I put these sessions verbatim into the book. I also worked with uh, a medium in New York State, Corby Mitleid. Corby has a number of gifts, one of which is that she can channel someone's soul, someone's higher self. So in working with Corby, this gave me the opportunity to interview a soul directly and say, what did you plan and why did you plan it? I worked with a medium in Chicago, Deb Dabari. She also has a number of gifts, one of which is that she's very skilled at speaking with the deceased. So very often, if we were working with somebody whose life challenge involved someone else who was now back in spirit, we would work with Deb. She would call in the person who was now back in spirit, and we would ask them directly, what did you plan with this person? And then the fourth person is a trans channel in Minnesota. Her name is Glenna Dietrich. Glenna generally channels angelic consciousnesses, some of whom serve as guides to people in body. So by working with these gifted mediums and channels and using their skills combined, we were able to find out what people had planned before they were born and why they had planned it. There's a chapter on the pre-birth planning of deafness and blindness. And in this chapter, I share the story of Penelope. She's a young African-American woman in her mid-20s. She was born completely deaf in both ears. When we went into Penelope's pre-birth planning session, we heard her talking with her spirit guide, and we learned that in the lifetime immediately previous to this one, Penelope had the same mother she has in this lifetime. And in that past life, Penelope heard her mother shot to death by the mother's boyfriend. Now, she was a young child when this happened. She didn't actually witness the murder, but she was within hearing range, and she heard the gunshots that killed her mother. As you can imagine, she was quite traumatized by that, and in fact, it actually led her to commit suicide in that lifetime. So Penelope has what you might call an energy of unresolved trauma, which now needs to be healed. When we go into the pre-birth planning session, we hear, we hear her and her spirit guide talking about this. And the guide says to her, my dear, would you prefer to be born deaf so that no similar trauma will happen to you again and so that you can complete the healing that is unresolved from the previous lifetime? And Penelope says, yes, that is what I want and what I wish to do. That we should just know in our hearts that we are um, a divine light, a uh, divine soul. Sometimes the response is, well, how can I see myself as courageous when I experience so much fear in my life? There's so much fear. I'm so afraid so much of the time. 
I think the answer to that question is that you all knew before you got here that fear was going to be part of the package. You couldn't not know that. I would submit to you that only the courageous plan fear. And let me say that again because I think this is very important. Only the courageous plan fear. So when you have that moment where you feel victimized by one of your challenges or by another person, when you have that moment of feeling like God or the universe is punishing you for something, when you have that moment of low self-esteem or you're questioning why am I here and what is it all about, I would suggest to you, and literally do this, look into a mirror, look into your own eyes, and say out loud, I am a holy, courageous soul. I am the brave soul who left a realm of love and light and peace and joy to come here to experience these challenges, to heal, to balance karma, in service to others, to experience contrast. That's who you really are. You're not your body, you're not your personality. You are a holy, courageous soul.